Hey, welcome to Five Lakes Garage, the home of random projects. We have lifts, we have Jeeps, we have trucks, we have food. You name it, we got it. So help out the channel by just hitting that subscribe button. And if you like the video, go ahead and like it. And if you really like the video, like it and then tell a friend. But stay tuned, enjoy yourself. I'm gonna let you go because I got stuff to do. Welcome back to the Five Lakes Garage channel and today, yes, I made up a new project for myself. Um, and actually it's something I've been kind of wanting to do for a long time but I just haven't quite got around to do it yet. Alright, looks like the wind's not really going to die down so I apologize for the audio. But we'll be in the shop real soon so you don't have to worry about it. I do apologize. But what's our project? Well, if you've seen some of the other videos, uh, you saw that I rebuilt my trailer so that I can actually haul the CJ. Now. I will admit it is a Jeep and I do abuse it off-road and it's also like 40 some years old so my biggest issue with that guy is what if it's dead am I gonna be able to push it onto this trailer most of the time probably not <clears throat> so we're gonna put a winch on this guy now this winch here I just picked it up from Harbor Freight it's the cheapy little I think it was 140 bucks but it's a 3,500 pound actually it's a UTV winch but we're gonna put it on the trailer itself so I did pick up a couple little accessories. I did pick up a little uh, winch plate. Uh, this is basically for an ATV winch mounting plate. Yeah. So anyway, uh, this should be strong enough to be able to handle this 3,500 pound. Uh, if the vehicle is heavier and we can't tow it, okay, we'll just put a snatch block on it. Then boom, you got like 6,000, 7,000 pounds of uh, pulling power. So we should be okay with that. Now, how are we gonna actually attach it onto the trailer? Well, take a look and we'll show you the exact thing that we're gonna have planned here. Okay, we are at the tongue of the trailer. We have our brake controller here. Well, actually, it's the battery pack for the braking system. And if you look here, I just picked up a uh, standard receiver tube. And basically, I'm just gonna cut this down a little bit because it is a little bit long. And I'll be able to just strip all that off, weld it to the actual frame itself. Uh, might have to put a spacer underneath it because this flange yeah, there I can cut the flange off and they haven't quite decided yet but we will see we might actually raise it up a little bit to be able to get a better angle at it maybe just put some guess I don't know we have we'll figure that one out figure that one out um, now I do have an old receiver here there we go so it's just an old uh, what's that like a maybe a two and a half inch drop receiver so I'm just gonna flip this up uh, upside down I'm gonna put the plate on top there we go and then put the winch on top of that so that this will actually be removable so this guy will be on the frame somewhere around here i'm going to have to uh, move my emergency brake uh controller maybe i'll move it over here or maybe move it on top of this i don't know i haven't figured that out that one out yet but i will so anyway so this will sit somewhere around here the winch will sit on top of my uh, receiver and then when i need it i'll slide her in put my pin in bam and now I'm ready now one thing I want to do with this mount here so we'll have the winch mounted here which I'll get it out of the box but I also want to weld on another bracket for the battery now the battery will sit right here uh, you could run lines all the way to the front of the vehicle but if you do that then it's a really long run and also you need to do it in my case I need to do it for the Tacoma and the Dodge I don't really want to do that but both vehicles do have the seven pin connector which has the charging cable so what I'm gonna do is actually have the battery sitting right behind the winch and then I'm gonna wire into my main wiring source bring it back up to the controller so all I gotta do is plug it in and then we will be charging that battery the whole time with the vehicle so so that is the plan so let's go go jump inside and actually put this into put this thing into action yeah, now I get to carry everything in. Yay! So, let's open her up and see what we get. There she is. Look how cute that is. Oh, it's so tiny. 
I'm so used to the, the big ones. All right, so this guy here, so that will sit there. The battery will sit right there. Run the wires, short wires, bam, bam. All right, so the next thing is uh, I'm gonna get uh, find some steel from over there and be able to build all this stuff. And then we should be able to put, weld it to the receiver and then install it. It should be pretty simple, pretty easy. And I um, can't wait to see it actually in action. So cool, I'm gonna find me some instructions, read them, so I don't mess up again. And we'll get this thing going. Yeah! Why do I do this to myself? All right, I think I got it figured out. Uh, and actually, I'm kind of excited. Uh, even though I'm just using crap pieces of uh, material here, but it should be strong enough to actually do what we want to do. So this is what we got. All right, so I just used some uh, Z channel from the network rack that I picked and drill some holes uh, down, the uh, down the side of it. And I'm gonna use one winch plate for the battery side and I'm gonna use the other winch plate for the winch side. And this would actually be able to hold it all together. So basically what we're gonna do. Okay, so we have our winch right here. We're gonna use our battery. I just grabbed one out of the Jeep because it, I kind of needed something to mock up. Now. I did leave a little bit of space here because I'm going to use, at least for now, until I can get some rubber ones, but I just have a, uh, an S, not an SOS, but a uh, scotch Bright pad that I'm going to use as a, not only a spacer, but a buffer to keep it from vibrating so much. And then I uh, also have bolts under there, so I'm going to have to put some sort of plate there to actually elevate it up so it doesn't wear holes into the battery which would be not good. Now, the one thing good about the Odyssey batteries is that you can tip it up, tip it over, spin it around. It doesn't make a difference. It's gel coated, uh, gel inside. So it could, it can be sideways if you want. I'm just gonna leave it straight up. And then I'm going to have my winch plate right here. Then I'm gonna take my trusty dusty winch and put that right there. And there's a little bit of gap in between the battery and the winch. So that should be good. All right, I did also have to uh, relief some of the bracket down here to be able to fit the winch in. Now, uh, to be able to control everything, what we're gonna do is actually, I, I took these, uh, some more network brackets. Ugh. Just kind of cut it off just to make it look, at least look a little bit better. And what I'm gonna do is weld that onto here. Got one on either side. Where's my other one? All right. For all my controls, I actually took a another piece. I just drilled a hole for my uh, my cable to come out to be able to control the winch. And you also have controls up here if um, if you're up here by the by the actual controls. Now all your big wires are going to go to this guy. This is your solenoids. Uh, they're all color coded, which is awesome. We got blue, black, red, and yellow. The yellow and the blue actually go to the winch itself. The black. Uh, the black is actually ground, as you should know, and then the other one is your uh, positive from the battery. So we are going to be able to stick this guy, Oops. and I'll just weld that up here on top, see if I can hold it without it falling. So it'll be like this. Now this is also going to dub as a handle because you got a little place for your hand. You can actually lift it up without actually damaging anything. At least I hope, but I'm going to have this sitting up here a little bit so I can easily take the battery out when I need to. So now that's up there, and if I need to, I can strengthen it up. But once I put my top piece on, that should strengthen it up going side to side. So now I just gotta dismantle this, because I don't want anything, any slag to get on my electronic stuff. Weld it between these two tabs, and then mock everything up one more time, then take it apart and paint it, just to make sure. 
All right, I'm gonna get this thing off and try to get this guy on there. Be right back. All right, pretty much got it all welded in there. Still kind of hot, but that's pretty much it. I mean, you're gonna have a battery, you're gonna have a winch, all my controls, throw some black paint on it and wait for it to dry. So I'm pretty sure you don't wanna see paint dry. So we'll come back a little bit later. I got some other projects I gotta get taken care of anyway, uh, but I'll just quickly just knock off some of the sharp edges and get it upstairs and throw some paint on her. Look, I got a handle. It's gonna be awesome. I hope, maybe. <laughs> anyway, all right, come back a little bit later. Woo, that's hot. All right, here she is, all painted black. Eh, it's a little bit wet, but it should be all right. But anyway, so this is gonna be our final product here. Uh, so now all we have to do is actually put everything together. Now, I did have to go to, what, four different locations to actually get a three-quarter inch grade eight bolt. But when you actually get the bolt for your project like this, we don't want that nut to come off. So definitely get a lock washer. There's also two different thread patterns that you can use for this, uh, for your bolt. Now there's grade eight and there's, I want to say there's like a 10 or 11 thread on there. And then there's the 16. I picked up the 16. All right, this one I believe is a 13 thread count. And I believe it's, uh, and, and go ahead and comment below if I'm wrong, because I probably am. But this is a 13 thread count. So within an inch, there should be 13 threads. On this particular one here, there is uh, 16 threads. But I need to get this guy off so I can show you what I got here. One second. Right here, if you can look at the threads on that guy, that's, uh, I want to say it's a 16. But anyway, it's a fine thread three quarter inch grade eight bolt. I don't think I'm gonna break it. So anyway, all right, I'm gonna go tighten this down real quick. I gotta put it on the vise because it's kind of cumbersome. So I'm gonna do that, come back, and we'll put the rest of it together and show you what it looks like. All right, that's what she's about gonna look like. The only thing we have left to do would be to put on our controls. Now, all of the holes that I needed to actually put screws in there, I did use a tap. So this is your tap. It actually makes threads into the holes. And it worked out great because I just had these little dinky screws laying around and they work out great. But the next thing is left would be just the wiring and maybe put the, uh, the fairling and the, the hook on there. But yeah, she's coming out. I'm liking it so far. So anyway. Oh, and if uh, you hear something upstairs, that will be my camera dude. Because we have one of those, uh, you know, those proud dad moments. Uh, introduced them to the concept of a blowgun for those little Nerf darts. She's a regular half inch PVC pipe. And he looked at it, he played with it for a little bit, came back to me and said, you know what, I can make this better. Which was so exciting, exciting for me that it's actually being passed on to the next generation. You can always make things better. Uh, but I'm letting him go up there, he's using the tools and being responsible, so. Hopefully it'll turn out. So anyway, uh, I'm gonna get the wiring all down pat and then show you exactly how I did it. All right, I finally got my connectors. I got everything except for one, my inline fuse. Now I could just go up to AutoZone or whatever, I'm sure they have it, in which I'll probably end up doing that or I can just wait for, uh, wait for my inline fuse to come in. Now what I wanted to do was actually have an inline fuse for the trigger. Now right now I just have a wire going from the positive over to my master cutoff. Now a good story about this little guy here, I just my uh, son Corbin opened up the box for me and the first thing he said, I was so proud. He said, oh dad, are we putting nitrous on something? And uh, yeah, it's awesome that he thinks that a toggle switch equals nitrous. <laughs> anyway, uh, so this is basically what we have done with the actual wiring itself. So I have my switch here. So this is the master cutoff. So you got out and then in. So this part works. Uh, the little trigger thing actually works. Everything is nice and neat. 
you got the main cut off here. I did put a little bracket on this side to try to protect the switch just a little bit and also put heat shrink on everything. All right, so this right here is actually gonna be for my charging. And all it really is is the same plug that you'll find like on a forklift or whatever. I did uh, crimp on some connectors and put some heat shrink on there. So this is gonna stay on the back of this guy here. I'm gonna have another one on the trailer to I'll plug this in when I put this guy on there. And what that's gonna do is actually charge up from the truck. Now when I actually put it on the trailer, I'll show you which pins on the seven pin connector that it's gonna need to use. All right, so there, that there's my creation. Uh, still need to get some bu uh, rubber buffers that hasn't come in yet uh, to be able to isolate the battery a little bit so it's not rocking and rolling and scraping and all the other crap. Um, but then hopefully the next time you see this, I'll be have it on the trailer and we're gonna start wiring that up. That should be pretty cool. So anyway, I'm going to bed. It's late, sun's been down forever. See you in a bit, light off. All right, so we're ready to hook this thing up to the trailer. You probably just saw me actually weld on the receiver hitch onto, ooh, that's still a little warm. Now, <clears throat> as far as the wiring, uh, we're gonna be charging up our battery from the tow vehicle. Uh, this is basically a trickle charger. <clears throat> so if you have a seven pin connector, then you can actually do this. Most vehicles are already wired for this. If not, you might have to run a wire just to be able to supply uh, <clears throat> the charge all the way from the tow vehicle. So, uh, which which cable is, is it, do you ask? Oh, well, yeah, I kind of drew you a very rough sketch on what's going on. Now, if you look at the top of the plug, you have a little, a little hump right there. Well, that's right there. And this is basically looking directly into your trailer, not your truck. Your truck will be, some, it'll be different, it'll be backwards, basically. So right up here at the 11 o'clock spot, that is the cable that you're going to charge it with. All right. When it comes out of the thing, it's actually red. And then the other cable you need to worry about would be your ground, which is your ground is way down here, approximately in the five o'clock range. And then of course you have all your other ones. If you just started around at one o'clock, you have your brown, which is your running lights. You have um, three o'clock is your left turn signal which is also a yellow wire your ground is more of a five and that's white your blue is like a seven ish and that is blue uh your green wire is your right turn signal it's about at nine o'clock and then of course your charge is over here to the other side you also have an auxiliary in the front most of the time you don't have to worry about that you could connect that up to like maybe some backup lights or something like that it works out pretty well if you have such a big trailer but anyway, so this is a basic wire diagram. Now, I have been on trailers where things have not exactly been wired up correctly. I wired this up, I know it's correct, but I wanna make sure. So basically I'm gonna take my plug and I'm gonna take a good old fashioned molimeter. All right, now what you wanna do with the molimeter is actually put it onto ohms. Now it kinda looks just like that. And this one right here will actually give you a buzz when you have continuity, and that's what you're basically trying to measure. Now you do need to move your leads over to the uh, ohms or the continuity settings, and then you should be ready to go. This one here is all automatic. You don't have to worry about setting anything really. So what did I do here? All right, so inside here, I got a couple connectors and I actually hooked up some of my wires. And one of them, one's gonna be hot, one's gonna be ground. Now I'm gonna check both of those on the back of my plug here and to make sure that they, they are correct. So I'm gonna put, I'm gonna go for power ready, uh, power first. So I'm just gonna jam my connector or my lead right in there. And then I'm gonna go to my plug. Now I know because of the diagram, this one right here should be my power wire. Now let's see if it is. There we go. Here, I'll even jam it in there and let you see it. So I don't want you to think I'm lying to you. All right. All right, so that is my power. Now, for my negative, I'm gonna grab my black wire. And then I know that my white wire, which is also down at the five o'clock range, so it should be this one. There you go. So my wiring is correct. That's awesome. 
All right, so basically what we're gonna do now is take our two leads right here. I have some 5 16 heat shrink right there uh, that I'm gonna have, I'm gonna push up over our little dinky connectors, which are gonna be this guy. Now what this is gonna do is actually fit inside our plastic connector. So I did pick up a bunch of these. You probably saw these a little bit earlier. Basically, we're gonna crimp, on, crimp those on, stick it right in. So how are you gonna crimp them? Well, I do have some other videos on crimping and wiring and stuff like that, but we're gonna do it real quick just to give you a refresher if you need it. So I went out and bought one of these. Now this right here has multiple dies in it for multiple sizes and it's a head hydraulic crimper. Now you can take this and beat it with a hammer. You can hit it with pliers and stuff like that. It's a pretty decent connection, but this works fantastically. Uh, check out some of the other videos. I'll have some links down below on how to use this tool but let's go a really quick thing so you can either use a razor blade i like to use my knife you don't want to cut too many of the inside strands but you do want to be you have to take the outside insulation off now there you go crimped on there pretty tight not going to get it off There you go. All right, so now you're gonna grab your connector. Now, if you look on the side of it, it's got a plus and a minus. Don't mix them up. In not all cases, but red's usually positive. There we go. It'll snap right in, and you are ready to go. There you go, snap, snap. Alrighty. So this guy, Actually, let's just put it all together. All right, there we go. All right. Now, hook her up. There you go. Lock the back, red to red. And now she is ready to go, ready for some action. Anyway, uh, yeah, quick, easy operation here. Got everything in there. Everything seems to work. So I guess the next thing I'll, uh, I'll need to do is pull it out there and pull the Jeep on there like it's dead and uh, show you how well it works. I'm gonna have to do that tomorrow when I have more daylight because it's about to get dark. Anyway, uh, yeah, check out all the other videos. Uh, we got some on wiring, we got some on fabrication, automotive, whatever. Um, if you're looking for something I might have it up there if not shoot me something down in the uh, comments and I'll see what I can do anyway take it easy have fun enjoy yourself be creative use scrap stuff put it into like a nice neat package that you can take off and put back on so anyway take it easy have fun enjoy yourself and be creative and get out there and build something later